Python Requests Web Scraping Guide In this guide for the Python Web Scraping Playbook, we will look at how to set up your Python Requests scrapers to avoid getting blocked, retrying failed requests, and scaling up with concurrency. Python Requests is the most popular HTTP client library used by Python developers. So in this article, we will run through all the best practices you need to know, including making GET requests, making POST requests, using fake user agents with Python requests, using proxies with Python requests, retrying failed requests, scaling your scrapers using concurrent threads, and rendering JavaScript on client-side rendered pages. If you want to learn more about how to use Beautiful Soup or web scraping with Python in general, then check out our Beautiful Soup guide or our Python Beginners web scraping guide. Let's begin with the basics and work ourselves up to more complex tasks. Get requests. Making get requests with Python requests is very simple. We just need to request the URL using requests.get. So we import requests, make a get request, and we can print the response text. The following are the most commonly used attributes of the response class, and we can print out the values of each one of them. The status code prints the HTTP status code of the response. The text is the response content as a Unicode string, and the content is the response content in a byte string. Headers is a dictionary-like object containing the response headers. And the URL is the URL of the response. We can see the encoding of the response. And we can check to see if there are any cookies sent by the server. We can check the history, which would contain a list of previous responses if there were any redirects. And OK provides a Boolean indicating whether the response was successful. And then the reason would be a phrase returned by the server, such as OK or not found. Elapsed is the time elapsed between sending the request and receiving the response. And the request is an object. Making post requests. Making post requests with Python requests is also very simple. To send JSON data in a post request, we just need to request the URL using requests.post, along with the URL and the data using the JSON parameter. To send form data in a post request, we just need to request the URL using the data parameter. For more details on how to send post requests with Python requests, check out our Python requests guide on how to send post requests. Using fake user agents with Python requests. User agents are strings that let the website you're scraping, identify the application, operating system, browser, etc. of the user sending a request to their website. They are sent to the server as part of the request headers. Here is an example of a user agent sent when you visit a website on a Chrome browser. When scraping a website, you also need to set user agents on every request, as otherwise the website may block your requests because it knows you aren't a real user. In the case of most Python HTTP clients, like Python requests, when you send a request, the default settings clearly identify that the request is being made with Python requests in the user agent string. This user agent will clearly identify your requests are being made by the Python requests library, so the website can easily block you from scraping the site. That is why we need to manage the user agents we use with Python requests when we send requests. How to set a fake user agent in Python requests. 
Setting Python requests to use a fake user agent is very easy. We just need to define it in a headers dictionary and add it to the request using the headers parameter. How to rotate user agents. In the previous example, we only set a single user agent. However, when scraping at scale, you need to rotate your user agents to make your requests harder to detect for the website you're scraping. Luckily, rotating through user agents is also pretty straightforward when using Python requests. We just need a list of user agents in our scraper, and then we'll use a random one with every request. Now this works, but it has drawbacks, as we would need to build and keep an up-to-date list of user agents ourselves. Another approach would be to use a user agent database, like ScrapeOps Free Fake User Agent API, that returns a list of up-to-date user agents that you can use in your scrapers. Here is an example Python requests scraper integration. So in this example, we are using our ScrapeOps API key, and we've created two functions. The first function reaches out to the ScrapeOps API and gets the latest list of user agents. Our second function takes that list and picks a random one. So down in our loop, we will be getting a random user agent from the user agent list for every URL that we want to scrape. For a more detailed guide on how to use fake user agents with Python requests, make sure to check out our guide to setting fake user agents with Python requests, or check out this video. Using proxies with Python requests. Using proxies with the Python requests library allows you to spread your requests over multiple IP addresses, making it harder for websites to detect and block your web scrapers. Using a proxy with Python requests is very straightforward. We simply need to create a proxies dictionary and pass it to the proxies attribute of our Python requests request. This method will work for all request methods Python requests supports, such as get, post, put, delete, patch, and head. However, the above example only uses a single proxy to make requests. To avoid having your scrapers blocked, you need to use a large pool of proxies and rotate your requests through different proxies. There are three common ways to integrate and rotate your scrapers. You can rotate through a list of proxy IPs, use proxy gateways, and use proxy APIs. Proxy integration number one, rotating through a proxy IP list. Here, a proxy provider will normally provide you with a list of proxy IP addresses that you will need to configure your scraper to rotate through and select a new IP address for every request. The proxy list you receive will look something like this. To integrate them into our scrapers, you need to configure your code to pick a random proxy from this list every time you make a request. In our Python request scraper, we could do it like this. Here we have a list of proxies, so then we're choosing a random integer between 0 and 3 as our proxy index, and in our proxies dictionary, we're just going to pick that proxy from the list and then send that dictionary with the proxies parameter to our get request. When we make our get request, we will include that proxy with our proxies parameter. This is a simplistic example, as when scraping at scale, we would also need to build a mechanism to monitor the performance of each individual IP address and remove it from the proxy rotation if it got banned or blocked. Proxy integration number two, using proxy gateway. Increasingly, a lot of proxy providers aren't selling lists of proxy IP addresses anymore. Instead, they are giving you access to their proxy pools via a proxy gateway. Here, you only have to integrate a single proxy into your Python request scraper, and the proxy provider will manage the proxy rotation, selection, cleaning, etc. on their end for you. This is the most common way to use residential proxies and mobile proxies, and it's becoming increasingly common when using data center proxies as well. Here is an example of how to integrate Bright Data's residential proxy gateway into our Python request scraper. Here we have a simple dictionary with the proxy gateway configured and in our get request we are using the proxy 
proxy's parameter and the auth parameter to send our authentication information to the proxy. As you can see, it's much easier to integrate than using a proxy list, as you don't have to worry about implementing all the proxy rotation logic. Proxy integration number three, using proxy API endpoint. Recently, a lot of proxy providers have started offering smart proxy APIs that take care of managing your proxy infrastructure for you by rotating proxies and headers for you so you can focus on extracting the data you need. Here, you typically send the URL you want to scrape to their API endpoint, and then they will return the HTML response. Although every proxy API provider has a slightly different API integration, they are all very similar and very easy to integrate with. Here's an example of how to integrate with the ScrapeOps Proxy Manager. Here, you simply set the URL you want to scrape to the ScrapeOps API endpoint in the URL query parameter, along with your API key in the API key query parameter, and ScrapeOps will deal with finding the best proxy for that domain and return the HTML response to you. When using proxy API endpoints, it is very important to encode the URL you want to scrape before sending it to the proxy API. API endpoint. As if the URL contains query parameters, then the proxy API might think that those query parameters are for the proxy API and not the target website. To encode your URL, you just need to use the URL encode function as we've done in this example. For a more detailed guide on how to use proxies with Python requests, check out our guide to using proxies with Python requests or check out this video. Retrying failed requests with Python requests. When web scraping, some requests will inevitably fail from connection issues or because the website blocks the requests. To combat this, we need to configure our Python request scrapers to retry failed requests so they will be more reliable and extract all the target data. For a more detailed guide on how to retry failed requests with Python requests, make sure to check out our guide to retrying requests with Python requests on our blog or check out this video. One of the best methods of retrying failed requests with Python requests is to build your own retry logic around your request functions. The advantage to this approach is that you have a lot of control over what is a failed response. Above, we only look at the response code to see if we should retry the request. However, we could adapt this so that we also check the response to make sure the HTML response is valid. Here, we are going to add an additional check to make sure the HTML response doesn't contain a ban page. Scaling your Python request scrapers with concurrent threads. Another common bottleneck you will encounter when building web scrapers with Python requests is that by default, you can only send requests serially, so your scraper can be quite slow if the scraping job is large. However, you can increase the speed of your scrapers by making concurrent requests. The more concurrent threads you have, the more requests you have active in parallel and the faster you can scrape. For a more detailed guide on how to make concurrent requests with Python requests, make sure to check out our guide to scaling your scrapers using concurrency with Python requests on our blog or check out this video. One of the best approaches to making concurrent requests with Python requests is to use the thread pool executor from Python's concurrent.futures package. Here's an example. Here we define a list of URLs we want to scrape, create a function called scrape page that will take a URL as input and output the scraped title into the output data list. Then Using the thread pool executor, we create a pool of workers that will pull from the list of URLs and pass them into the scrape page function. Now, when we run the script, it will create five workers that will concurrently pull URLs from the list of URLs and pass them into the scrape page function. Using this approach, we can significantly increase the speed at which we make requests with Python requests. Rendering JavaScript on client side rendered pages. As Python requests is an HTTP client, it only retrieves the HTML or JSON response the website server initially returns. It can't render any JavaScript on client-side rendered pages. This can prevent your scraper from being able to see and extract all the data you need from the web page. 
As a consequence, using a headless browser is often needed if you want to scrape a single page application built with frameworks such as React, Angular, jQuery, or Vue. In the case that you need to scrape a JavaScript rendered page, you can use the headless browser libraries for Python, like Selenium or PyPeTier, instead of Python requests. Check out our guides to scraping JavaScript rendered pages with PyPeTier on our blog. Another option is to use a proxy service that manages the headless browser for you, so you can scrape JavaScript rendered pages using Python requests, HTTP requests. The ScrapeOps proxy aggregator enables you to use a headless browser by adding the render underscore JS equals true parameter to your requests. And you can get your own free API key with 1000 free requests by signing up here. If you would like to learn more about web scraping, be sure to check out the web scraping playbook or check out one of our more in-depth guides. For more information, make sure to check out our other videos on our YouTube channel. As always, thank you and make sure to like and subscribe.